Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle book review of The Secret Teachings of a Comic Book Master, The Art of Alfredo Alcala. Now, I couldn't find many books at all about Alfredo Alcala. This was the only one I could find. After seeing some amazing work in The Savage Sword of Conan, The Omnibuses, and also, of course, in the original comics as well. Staggering, brilliant artist. I really, I thought, oh, I could. And I found this one. Now, I'd love to see a massive, massive sort of volume about him, but unfortunately, this is what we've got. And you can see the details there of the writers. Also, introduction by Gil Kane and Roy Thomas. Now, this book came out in 2015. It's 2015, but it was originally published in 1994 by the Humour Advisory Council. Anyway, that's the reason for this. And you've got the details on the back there. You've got, obviously, the Conan the Barbarian, Batman, and, of course, many others as well. And it talks about a whole range of different things. Narrative art, sequential art, and much, much more. Lots of hints and tips. Great advice all the way through it. So let's just turn to the first page. Now, it's not a very big book. You can see it's 72 pages. It's on glossy paper. Now, the quality of the reproduction is not as super sharp as the ones at the Omnibus. The Omnibus ones are really amazingly but you can see there, the I mean, it's, it's pretty good. I think it's absolutely fine, but it's still, if you're coming to it, just be aware that it's not super sharp, super sharp as it possibly could have been. But here you've got the, all obviously details there. You've also got uh, special thanks. And let's go on to the actual book. You've got an introduction by Gil Kane. As mentioned, it's very short. I love Gil Kane's work. I wish there was a bit more of an introduction than that, but I guess it says exactly what he wants to say. And that's it. And then you've got the reminiscence there. Roy Thomas, of course, Conan, etc. And also other details as well, which is just great. Also talking about artists on the road with a real artist. And of course, just fascinating just reading all the details. It's like lots of references like 1976, 1977. You can, now you can see here, 1980. That's a real good start. And you've also got let's some examples of his work all the way through now some of the examples are very very tiny so it's uh, but you've also got lots of details about how to uh, brief history of filipino comics as well as hints and tips and the secret teachings number six learn to observe all those sort of things i don't want to say all the tips because but they're all great advice ones that you probably can work out but at the same time it's always nice to read someone obviously who is a master of his art Actually saying the sort of things to do. And I think it's good, like reading, watching films and things. That's what, the sort of thing I always do. Look at it and think, how would that, that would be amazing as a comic book. Quite often like, I'm when reading plays or something, I think, oh, this would be brilliant to adapt into a thing like Shakespeare. I love all those sort of things, of course. Renaissance plays, all those things. I always think that'd be brilliant as a set of comics. But still, it's got tons of excellent observations. Number nine, learn to draw and talk at the same time. Mm, that'd be a tricky one. I love talking too much, baby. Like, it'd be very hard to draw as well. I'd be, I'd, it'd go all over the place if I was starting doing that. However, the art of observation. I'm the worst person in the world for observing things. So uh, in that sense, it's um, I really should learn from that. Definitely how to do, go and observe things like camels or elephants, not sort of thing that generally are found in my town. Uh, there was a zoo years and years ago, but of course you could go up to, I could go up to London and sort of sketch out but I must say, I love, recently I went to model drawing, I went to a live model, and it was just brilliant. Really, it was amazing. Just Unfortunately, I was too far away, but still at the same time, I thought, God, I really hope the National Gallery does that more. I would love to love to do that. Of course, it's so expensive otherwise. But otherwise, of course, you've got yourself. That's the thing, you just draw yourself, as it suggests. <laughs> That's the easiest way. Now, there's not particularly, if you're coming to this looking for Conan, you're not going to find it. Also, it's got about the tools coming here. Obviously, the pencils, the various soft and hard pencils, all those sort of things. All great advice. Now, I've, I've over the years seen so much advice about you should use this pencil, use that pencil, this pen, that pen. And of course, everyone will have their own favourite ones to use. And also about reference books. Now, I've got loads of reference books. I love reference. I've just got one here. I'm just going to quickly show you. Brilliant reference book. Now, other people will turn around and say, no, that's a terrible reference book. But you can get these sort of things, figure reference books. Just great books. I've got loads of other ones. Just, you know, look at those. But, of course, you can find it elsewhere. You can find just loads of different sources. And, of course, your friends, whatever. Composition as well. 
describes that very well all the way through and tons and tons of other ones there and also it's got things like here examples of work obviously the filipino work and wow but of course i would never see any of these comics i haven't seen i don't think i've ever seen a comic convention that i've ever been to and i haven't been to the philippines so i just wouldn't have access to them i guess if i do ever go i must remember to just pick up loads of great comics and it's also talking about graphic novels. He did the Statue of Liberty one. So he's got an example there of the Statue of Liberty one. Also, you've got here a lovely Voltar. Now, this is a series I'd never heard of. Never heard of that at all. So he talks about it. And he's also talking about the game composition, what about the flames, the positions, how to set certain focus points and things. And the, the eye going to the area and that sort of stuff. I'd say it looks very cone like sword and sorcery, but it looks very impressive. Really, really brilliant artwork. It explains about, you know, the white space and all those sorts of things. All very useful things, things to, to learn. Though I must <laughs> look at that. It's very hard to actually see any white space. There's very little, but I guess that what there is, is important. And that actually is the thing with a lot of this. You look at the artwork, the inking sometimes, and you, you can see, and it you have to really look at it and try and strip away. In many ways, it would have been nice to see more pencil work. There's no pencil work in here, as far as I can see. There might be some, but I haven't. But it would be nice to see a little bit of the sort of underneath as well. I mean, you can see, of course, you can just, see, but it's, it would just make it a lot easier. Sometimes the, when you look at it, you can quite easily get sort of bamboozled by the sort of the amazing quality of the artwork and just not really look at it and ponder it, which of course you should be doing if you're going to use this book to study, to draw. And also it's got that painting as well. This is probably one of the more interesting ones in terms of e ease of looking at it so you can actually see all the various people in that scene and all what they're doing, all the various observations of it. Now again, I would turn around and say, someone turned around after I looked at it, I looked at it just briefly then, and they said, how many cats are there? I'm going, but some people probably can say, oh, that's a because they could just picture it in the, and they'd say six or three or whatever. This is actually three. Unless I see another cat in there somewhere. It's probably one hidden. That isn't part of the question. It's what not one of those how many of the things you can see. But it's got also got lots of details about, you know, the the actual peak cast in that. All the various people, the little girl, the boy bringing the vinegar, uh, how did you approach the drawing? All those sort of things. Just really useful advice. I love these sort of books. I've got quite a few of these sort of, uh, there's, Brilliant ones I've picked up recently. Just absolutely. And I'm going to do a quick a video on all my books on that sort of subject. I've got quite a lot, as well as reference books as well. Though quite a few of my reference ones I probably can't do because they're on Kindle, so it's going to be a bit trickier. But still, and he says, talks about here about memory, and you should have a good memory. <laughs> I'm not so certain about that one for me. Anyway, Dover Books on instruction. Now, this is, I didn't realise they had so many. Now, we had a Dover bookshop in. London for ages and ages and ages. I must look at that. The book of a hundred hands. That sounds interesting. <laughs> now again, that's the thing is you've got the hands, how to position the hands, all the sort of movements of the hands, how to that's every sort of pose of the hand. All important stuff. I mean, I know it's sometimes can be very tiny, and therefore probably you could say argue not. But if you've got it close up, you're actually showing expression because because that's what people show expressions with their hands. So it's it's great information about the, all the areas need to work. Instead of just always studying, of course, and that's some, one of the things it mentions, that you can have a tendency to just focus on the face, which of course is, you know, and uh, maybe the muscles and things. And, you know, and also if people just take them from obviously other people, they're looking and copying that style. Sometimes they're not always right. So that sort of, sort of thing, you've got to really study them, really. Uh, the book's trying to attack me at this point. <laughs> but anyway. Quick sketching, and I love doing that. That's one thing I do enjoy. If I put a TV programme on, quite often I get my sketch pad out and I will just do a quick drawing of a scene. And then, of course, it's moved on. Quickly to another sketch, and then another sketch, another sketch. News programmes are great for that. I love doing news programmes or, or a chat shows or something because, of course, they concentrate on a person for a bit of time. So you've got a bit of time just to quickly... Otherwise, you just... It's gone. <laughs> you think, like me. So I really sort of do rapid sketch sort of from that sort of thing. It's just quick sort of... You know, way of the layout, how the body's been held, and positions, etc., etc., how they move back, how the everything, everything about them, all this sort of thing. And like how the, you know, the clothes, all the folds, etc., everything falls. And it's got lots of, you know, I'm talking about these sort of things, but pleasures of sketching outdoors. 
I'm not so certain about that one. I guess there are some pleasures of drawing out. You know, I don't, I really should, I don't do that, but I should. But uh, so dynamic anatomy, really good stuff. Perspective drawing, figure drawing. Uh, what's that? Charcoal, oh, charcoal. I was going to look, I suddenly saw coal there. I was thinking coal. <laughs> drawing handbook, wildlife sketching, and so on. And I know this video isn't about what Dover's thing, but it's always good to see. There are an awful lot of other brilliant books, but not comic book ones. Now Dover obviously missed a great opportunity there for, to cover hundreds and hundreds of great artists. I've got one like a Strango one that's really good. There's and everything. There's loads of artists that have done these ones and I, I think they're just great to look at. And, you know, hopefully learn various things from them. But this one, Secret Teachings of Comic Book Artists, that's a master. It's a thin book, but it is a good book. And if you can get a copy of this, you should be able to find it reasonably easy, I would have thought. It's really worth checking out. So uh, this one, The Art of Alfredo Acala. And I guess I quite often get asked, show the IBN. So you can just see the, the IBN there. There's the IBN details. You see it's $14.95 US. I'm not certain what it was in the UK. I can't remember. Probably $14.95. No idea. To be honest, I can't remember on that one. But it's still printed, obviously, in the USA. And so there's the details. Really worth checking out. Totally recommended.